My relationship with fear and highlining are very intimately entwined. I don't think you can separate it. I actively seek that experience, knowing that I will be fearful. Knowing my fear allows me to not be so crippled by it. Yeah, we got into slacklining originally. That's just like a meter off the ground. And then highlining was the next progression. We just wanted to go up high. Dreaming of being in that space between the cliffs is where it starts. So highlining is stringing up a piece of webbing, which is a flat piece of rope. Um, and we string it up between two points and walk across it. We're gonna head down to this potential highline spot on the coast. We're gonna go and suss out the anchors and see if there's an option there for a highline and hopefully rig something up. And the first line Tommy and I established was in our home community of Avalon, a really beautiful sea cave. The coastal highlines are usually quite dynamic with waves crashing and salt spray and yeah, there's definitely a lot more energy. All the different senses are alight, so you're trying to focus on balancing, but everything else is like da, da, da. <laughs> Yeah, the highlining community is very tight, out of necessity. If you're rigging lines with other people, you're literally putting your life in their hands. I'm fucking not as sure as Jack. It's a fucking heavy bag. <laughs> the first thing we're gonna do is just check out and see where the best line is gonna go and, and what natural anchors are there to fix to. We'll tag the line, then we just walk this thin piece of rope out, join it to the anchors, and then we can pull the webbing straight across, get the line at the right tension, and clip in and start walking. How long do you reckon it is? Well, I think it's smaller than 50. That's, that's the rig we've got. Yeah. Swells up, so we might be getting some sea spray, which is always exciting, because a lot of the time when you're highlining, you're on such a big, big gap, you don't have that connection, because we're pretty close to the ocean here. That salt mist is just a reminder that it's not that far. My relationship with the coast is multifaceted for sure. Spearfishing, diving, sailing, highlining, surfing, body surfing. They just refresh me and renew me. So in terms of pushing limits with highlining, the longest line I've currently walked would be the uh, 1.3 kilometre line in the Blue Mountains. It's a multifaceted journey physically where it's well and truly a slack line. If there's wind anywhere along that line, it's like a serpent that just bends and weaves through the sky. I'll bring this 30 metre over, it should be enough. Far side anchors, the other half of the rig. Jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle. When you're out on a high line, I feel like everything that you feel is just heightened. So feeling a little unsure with yourself or if you're feeling super happy or kind of translates into how you walk. I have to feel very sure of my balance before I keep taking steps. I'm always searching for this like perfection, which I never really find. We're gonna send the webbing over now. Jack's gonna pull the tagline across. He'll be receiving the end of the webbing, which is what we're gonna end up walking on, which is this 25 millimeter nylon webbing that's nice and bouncy. Have a bit of fun. So when I go out on the line, my whole mental emotional state is intensified and brings things to the surface that I may have been avoiding initially. Like I've had times crossing like a 200 meter line where I'm in the middle, I can't walk, I'm unstable and I just, I've broken down and started crying, you know, just overwhelmed and things bubble to the surface and I got off the line and was hugged by all my beautiful friends and actually made to feel safe again. Yeah, it's all rigged and ready to go. A few little extra pieces of protection in just to make sure that the ropes don't get abraded, but yeah, it's more or less done. We're just gonna scissor paper rock to see who goes first. Every time I get up on a high line, it's its own beast, it's a new experience. When I first go to stand up, I'm quite tense. My body is scared of falling every time it's there, without, without fail, it never goes away. Even though I can walk long lines and I feel like I'm fairly capable, it just, it's always there. It's a massive internal journey or a roller coaster, especially approaching it, not knowing if I can actually do it, having self-doubt, getting on the line, feeling quite rigid and, and, and nervous. And then as I 
walk further and further out to the middle, my body starts to relax and come into this more of a flow state. And what helps me the most is just focusing step by step by step, being as present as possible. Yeah, when you're out on the line, at times it can be meditative. Sometimes you become more in tune with the noises and, and of course your internal feelings. If you're walking in, in, in this flow state, it, it can be that meditative state. And other times it can be quite frustrating because you're trying to stand up and you can only take a couple of steps and you fall. When it comes to highlining, you see that you have the skills or the ability to deal with the fear. It's not sustainable to be having this adrenaline rush the whole time, so you really need to just focus, take a couple deep breaths and, and realise what you're doing and, and why you're there. And everything else just starts flowing. So the first time I went out on the high line, I was shitting myself. It's just such an innate sense of fear of falling. Once I just fell for my first time, it was actually really relieving. So it's this tension release, tension release. There's a fine line between pleasure and pain. <laughs> like this drive to push into discomfort probably stems from this knowing that it helps me evolve personally into a person who's less disabled by fears in general. Highlining has given me another avenue to explore the Australian country. It takes me to the most incredible places that I could only dream of. Yeah, the nice thing about a coastal highline is being right next to the water, so if we need to go cool off after a long day of highlining, we can just hop straight in. <laughs> Today's line definitely felt different. We didn't have much information on any of the anchors. It was rock that we hadn't really rigged on before. The ocean was massive. Yeah, we knew we could make it work, and we strung up a beautiful line and had so much fun on it. The waves, yeah, the waves were huge, and even though we're far away, we're still so connected to the energy of the ocean. Yeah, today was just the epitome of having fun in the sun with good friends.